Hey guys, in this video, let's talk about how to build your personal branding on LinkedIn. LinkedIn branding is critical to learn the right job interview invite. By building a strong personal branding on LinkedIn, you will be positioning yourself in a way to attract attention of recruiters and hiring managers so that they will reach out to you instead of you reach out to them. In this video, we are going to talk about a few things related to how to build your personal branding on LinkedIn. We are going to talk about why LinkedIn, why LinkedIn is important, what are recruiters looking for, what are some key elements of your LinkedIn profile. Then I will share with you a few tips for you to create or improve your LinkedIn profile to stand out from the competition. Finally, I will share with you a few action items. All right, let's start with why LinkedIn. According to the latest LinkedIn recruiting statistics, the number of remote jobs on LinkedIn between March 2020 and December 2020 was six times larger than before that period. There are a total of 61 million senior level top influencers on LinkedIn. Those people are hiring managers. LinkedIn is the easiest and most reliable way to reach out to hiring managers and expand your professional network. On top of that, it only takes you 30 minutes to one hour to build strong personal branding on LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Now let's start with understanding what are recruiters looking for. Once we understand this, we will have a clear idea on how to improve your LinkedIn profile to make it stand out. The very first thing recruiters care about is companies you worked with. Who did your help and your achievements while working with different companies? This is the most important thing that the recruiters care about because they want to know if you have relevant experience to do the job well. The second thing they are looking for is who do you know? Basically, your first level connections. Are you well connected with many data scientists, engineers, product managers? Or in your LinkedIn network, you are not connected with many professionals that they are looking for hiring. Your first level connection indicates how well you are connected. Now, once we know what recruiters are looking for, let's move forward to some key elements in your LinkedIn profile. We are going to start from the top to the bottom and looking at each element one by one. The first element is the channel art. This is the image on the top of your LinkedIn profile. Your channel art provides a personal touch to your profile. It's a nice to have feature. It's not a must have feature. A nice channel art can translate to passion and putting effort into branding yourself. Here I have two links for you. You can check out those websites and see if you find any image that is suitable to be the channel art of your LinkedIn profile. Now let's move forward to the next element in your LinkedIn profile, the photo. The photo is really important because it's typically the first impression when people look at your LinkedIn profile. It would be best if you were in business casual. Avoid using your wedding photo, photo with another person, or selfies to be the photo on your LinkedIn profile. Now here I have a tip for you, how to take a professional photo using your iPhone. Uh, so you can use a portrait mode in your iPhone and in the lighting setting, make sure to select studio light to brighten facial features. So if you use the portrait mode plus the studio light, you will get a very professional photo using your iPhone. Now let's move forward to the headline. The headline section is right below the photo. The headline is very important because it takes part in you being found by employers through keywords. The keywords are the positions that the recruiters are trying to fill and they should represent your areas of expertise. For example, you can have keywords such as data scientists, machine learning, applied statistics, and SQL in your headline. It is also recommended to put seniority in your headline. If you are a senior or a staff data scientist, you should put those keywords in your headline as well. Now let's move forward to the about section. The about section is similar to a self introduction. In this section, you want to list all your strengths and key accomplishments, which is the ultimate highlight of your career. And the sentence description, tell me about yourself to include how many years of experience you have and what you have done. After you have this self introduction, you can add another sentence to share what your business impact is for your role. Now let's move forward to another section, the work history section. This is the best part of your personal branding. As I mentioned earlier, recruiters care about your work history the most. 
In this section, uh, have one sentence for each employer to describe your role and responsibilities to help the reader understand your scope. It is recommended to use the first person to describe your work history. After you have this one sentence summarizing your role and responsibility, you can write three to six bullets of all the things you have done with accomplishments translating to business impact. You can take an estimate on how many percentages you are able to save in efficiency, how much money you are able to help your company or client generate or save, and any other notable achievements with numbers in them. The reason I emphasize numbers is because having numbers, dollar signs, and percentages immediately show scale and scope. When you describe your accomplishments, try to avoid words such as supported and collaborated to describe your role. Instead, use words to demonstrate your ownership, such as lead, owned, delivered, etc. One thing to note is to make sure you stay consistent with your format throughout your work history. For example, if you use a bullet, make sure you use the same format of bullet rather than change it to dashes. Here I have selected some emojis for you. You can use them to organize the content in your work history. You can also use them in the about section that we talked about earlier. Moving forward, the next section is education. This section, we want to keep it simple. Uh, you can remove your graduation date to help eliminate any biases such as age discrimination. You can also list your certifications and remove the dates as you don't want it to look like you just got certified as it can translate to not having enough experience in your domain. So in this education section, we want to keep it simple, only have the school, the degree, and certifications you have obtained. The last section in your LinkedIn profile is recommendation. My recommendation for you is to have at least one recommendation. You can ask for recommendations from former managers and leaders. Now, if you are looking for a manager position, you can ask for your reports to give you recommendations. This will help future employers understand your management style. All right, now we have talked about all the key elements in a LinkedIn profile. Let's move forward to some pro tips I have for you. The first tip is to avoid the three common mistakes in LinkedIn profiles. The first one is that your LinkedIn profile is empty, meaning that you don't have much information in your LinkedIn profile. This is an indication of laziness. The second common mistake is having too much information in your LinkedIn profile. This will make it hard to find useful information for recruiters and hiring managers. The third common mistake is a lack of keywords in the LinkedIn profile. For example, if you are looking for a data science position and you don't have data science, machine learning, experimentation, statistics, this kind of keywords in your LinkedIn profile, it indicates that you might not have the required skills to do the job well. Another pro tip I have for you is to add media to your LinkedIn profile. This will definitely help you stand out. You can add a link to your website, uh, links to some talks you have done, or publications you have published to your LinkedIn profile. All of those demonstrate you have experience and even expertise in certain domains. The last tip I have for you is to turn on profile's public visibility. This will help recruiters and hiring managers find you easily on LinkedIn. What you need to do is really simple. You can follow the instruction, but what you need to do is basically click Edit Public Profile and URL on your LinkedIn profile, and then turn on your profile public visibility. This will definitely help recruiters find you easily. And if you worry about privacy issue, here's a note from LinkedIn. Even if your profile is set to public, people who aren't LinkedIn members may be prompted to sign up or sign into LinkedIn to view parts of your public profile. So make sure your profile's public visibility to be on so that LinkedIn members are able to find you easily. Okay, these are the three pro tips I have for you. Avoid three common mistakes, add the media to your LinkedIn profile, and turn on profile's public visibility. Lastly, I want to go over a few action items for you. The first one is to check out these examples to inspire you to create or improve your own LinkedIn profile. It only takes you uh, 30 minutes to one hour to improve your LinkedIn profile. 
The second item is to add me to your LinkedIn network. This means that all my first level connections are your second level connections. This will also make it easier for you to connect with people in my network. All right, guys, that's everything I want to share with you on how to build strong personal branding on LinkedIn. I will see you in the next video.